thank you for the kind words that came before us. Brother Bobby, uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Hearty amen to that. If you have your Bibles with you and you'd like to turn with me, I would like to go back to uh, the scriptures that Brother Bobby had opened up with and kind of expound upon some more of that. I believe some of it is in line with what I had on my mind today. I know that today is a time that people set aside to celebrate fathers. And one thing that was beautiful about this scripture here, uh, found in First Timothy chapter four, that Apostle Paul was like a uh, father in a ministry to young Timothy. Uh, you know, we don't just have one father in the ministry. We have many. The scripture teaches that though we have 10,000 instructors, we also have fathers in this old world sometimes. We have many fathers. Uh, we have only one true heavenly father, and that is God the Father. We only have one true heavenly father. I'm thankful that we have one heavenly father because sometimes in this world, our natural fathers fail us. As we know, the scripture teaches in Psalms that when thy mother and thy father forsake thee, then will the Lord take thee up. Uh, that, I found comfort in that scripture in times when my father passed away. Sometimes our natural fathers will fail us either through faults uh, uh, they may have, they may fail at something. That's human nature. We all fail at something. We all fall flat on our face at one point in time in our life. Or maybe they just pass away and go on to glory and they may not be here like my father was when I was 19. It wasn't pleasant during that time, but it happened. But when uh, I fall on that scripture, when thy mother and thy father forsake thee, then will the Lord take thee up. May not mean to forsake thee, but maybe forsake thee in death, that the good Lord takes thee up and comforts you. I'm thankful for the good and warm memories I have of my father in times. And I've had wonderful father in the ministry in times, and I love to look back on uh, times that I had Elder Lonnie Mancingo Jr. in my life when my father passed away and he was there and what good memories I have when he would meet with me and encourage me with scripture as a pastor and he was like a father to me. There was times like that and other good people. My grandfather was a wonderful father to me in my life. I'm thankful for that and I can't even imagine what a Timothy may have felt during this time when Paul was encouraging him and writing unto him. Uh, these are things that he held special. And you think about this, that this uh, advice that, uh, that he's been given right here, when he's talking about such precious things and warning Timothy as a father in the ministry, he's warning him that those, those that are speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from each, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And then it's what Brother Bobby brought for us, uh, not to re-preach what he's saying, but to add to um, and to build upon, just beautiful. But notice he said in verse 14, as he mentioned, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Now this is his father in the ministry that has laid his hands upon him. Not all fathers in the ministry has laid their hands upon the young man that has been ordained. Sometimes things happen. Sometimes in life there's holdups, there's hardships. Sometimes uh, God uses men and sometimes there will be men that come along later in life in that man's ministry that will be like a father 
to them. I, I, uh, I find it encouraging when I come across men like Brother Charles, Brother Bobby, men that I came along later on in my ministry that had been like a father to me or other people in my life uh, that have been like a father in the ministry to me that is encouraging uh, in some way. Uh, also, we should be encouraging unto them. Uh, ministry encourages one another. Uh, in this life, we have an earthly father that is uh, a comfort to us, and sometimes there's fathers out there that aren't good fathers. You know, to be a father, uh, you know, to be a daddy, is it just uh, saying that this is my child biologically? It's an act, it's a duty, it's a work, it's a labor, it's a sacrifice. Uh, anybody that's ever been a daddy or a father to somebody, uh, there's sacrifices that a person puts in there. There's people that I have loved like a, my own child in my life, sometimes in my life, that I would sacrifice myself my own wants, my own desires, just as I do for my own children, um, for that individual. And whether they knew it or not, I love them like a father would their children because you are self-sacrificing of yourself. You give all that you can for that child to the best of your ability without uh, dishonoring God, but to honor and glorify God through your actions. Brothers and sisters, there comes a lot of responsibility to being a father, to being a father. I would like to turn over to Psalm 68, Psalm 68, verse 5. This is the scripture I had on my mind, and I would kind of like to tie it into this. Notice how God had prepared uh, for young Timothy in his ministry. He had prepared for him in a mighty way. He had blessed him with a man named Paul to be a father in the ministry to him. But right here in verse 5 of Psalm 68, it says, A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary. In families, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in dry land. I want you to think about how God has provided for his people as a heavenly father. God has provided for his people in such a way, it says that he is a father of the fatherless. So not only do those that have a natural father in this life, he's saying that he is a father to the fatherless. Now how comforting is that to those that have no father? Maybe their daddy may be gone uh, about, maybe they don't want to be their daddy anymore, and there's children out there that are roaming the streets today. There are mothers, there's widows uh, there that's all by themselves that have no husband uh, or no help. Uh, there's times and places that I've gone to and I see these children that have no daddies and, and mamas uh, sometimes. And it's so sad to see what they may be going through. There's sometimes that the uh, parents, uh, they're always apart and you only see one of the parents with the children all the time and, and the other spouse the daddy may be gone and doing things and, and how sad it may be. And you see the grandparents with the, the, the mama and the children a lot because there is the father's always gone somehow. How sad is it? And it breaks my heart uh, to see this. But even then, there's places when the grandparents aren't even around and they don't even have a grandfather to be around them. And those children are all by themselves and they learn by themselves. And sometimes they come up uh, and they see me around my children a lot. Uh, they see us go do things together. Uh, they see us out eating together a lot of times. 
<clears throat> and they looked and, and mesmerized. And you go and eat with uh, my son at lunch at school. And those children sitting around the table, some of those boys doesn't have fathers in their lives a lot of times. And they look to me and you could see mesmerization and mesmerized and scratching their head and wondering what it must be like to have their a daddy come and eat with them at school uh, for special holidays. Uh, that's sad that we've gotten to a time where people don't care any more than that. But brothers and sisters, I have been there when there was no father around. Uh, it felt like sometimes in my life. Uh, I've been there when the pain was so hard because of the loss of death and uh, death is, uh, it'll take you away, uh, someone away uh, from you that you love dearly. I've been there where you lay in your bed at night and think, uh, why, why so young? I've been there in the pain and when there's tough decisions that had to be made uh, and you had to take the bull by the horns and you had to make those decisions and you had to do it. I've been there when uh, all that responsibility felt like it fell upon your shoulder at a young age. It's exhausting and it's stressful. It'll make you older than you ever dreamed. <laughs> Real quick. But there was times in which that when those feelings would come across, that I could close my eyes in prayer and I looked to my heavenly father and I knew there was a place of refuge I could go to. Is that cleft in the rock that I could go and hide in from all the troubles and all the cares of this world that I could go into that cleft of that rock. Uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is that cleft in it. He's that rock that gives us that shelter that we can go to, that we can find our comfort, that we can find our peace. Paul was encouraging Timothy and reminding him without mentioning who that rock was and how to stay founded upon that rock in which Timothy was to abide in the things of the Lord and how he was to grow in the work of of the ministry and how he was to grow in the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How he's to able to be able to abide there in the Lord. You remember uh, last Sunday I spoke on abounding in the work of the Lord. Uh, Paul was uh, teaching and encouraging Timothy as his father in the ministry, encouraging him how to abound in the work of the Lord, how to encourage him, how to be strong in the Lord. We need to encourage one another in the work of the Lord. But thank goodness here in this opening text, there in Psalm 68, 5, a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. God's in his holy habitation. And let me tell you, he's a solitary God. He's the one that's uh, in charge there. He, there's none like him. There is no God other than the one true living God. Amen. There is those little G gods out there that people love to make. Uh, people carve them out of wood, make them out of, and fashion them out of gold. You remember that they worship the golden calf there at the bottom of the mountain while Moses was up uh, receiving the Ten Commandments and he came down and he was angered at them and he had righteous indignation, but not only that, but he was angered at them because why? They were worshiping a golden calf, stripping their clothes off, uh, worshiping that thing, loving that thing instead of loving the almighty God. He threw down the Ten Commandments out of that anger. And my dear friends, let me tell you, it should uh, make, you, uh, make you angry for God's sake, but that we sin not. You know, the Bible says, be ye angry, but sin not. Oh, I, Moses sinned there when he was angry. How many times have we sinned when we get angry? We sh there ain't nothing wrong when you're angry for the right reason, but sin not. Uh, be ye angry, but sin not. 
I've heard uh, the argument made that uh, man should be angry, should back away. Well, let me tell you what, that's how the enemy slips in and causes confusion. I can't even imagine how many times, sometimes I thought about, well, I'll just uh, wait until we take care of this situation with my children to talk to them when uh, the subject is arisen to talk to them about what they did wrong. And I said, well, we'll just wait till a later time. And somehow it always, it never fails. Something happens, something distracts you. And then it, you can't talk about it then because you can't have to remember what was going on. Sometimes you can. I remember a father in the ministry of mine used to mention that uh, the time to do it was right then when it happens. Let's deal with it. Let's put it aside. Let's put it away. And let's move on and go forward. But sometimes we, uh, we fail to do our job because we think, well, maybe wait a little bit later. I want us to think about some uh, scriptures found over in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40. This portion of scripture has always been an encouragement to me in Isaiah 40, verse 29 through 31. It's always been an encouragement because there was times in which we get weary and exhausted and worn out. You know, children get worn out and exhausted. And somehow, daddy or mama always seems to come along and help, help them in the way. Well, when we're adults, we don't have daddy and mama always to help us in the way, do we? And some of those children that don't have parents around them don't have that extra help to help them in the way. But this scripture found in Isaiah 40, 29, it says, He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You think about this, they that wait upon the Lord. Notice that right before that, it says he. Who is that? Our Heavenly Father. Our Father, our, our, our Heavenly Father has given us power to the faint. He encourages us. He uses the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost that is inside of us to speak to us, to encourage us that we might have fellowship with him, that we're able to speak and have a, a time of fellowship. You remember what I mentioned sometimes when my father was away and he was in glory and I had no father, I would close my eyes and I would pray and I could feel the Lord close to me. And I could have that time of fellowship at night and how that was a comfort to me. Well, he, God giveth power to the faint. When we are weak and exhausted and we feel like we can go no farther, he giveth us power. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. So when everybody else out there saying, well, that brother, he has no might, God is able to increase his strength. He can't make it through because he is faint. God gives him power. God gives us power and he gives us strength to be able to get through what it is that we've got to get through. Sometimes it gets uh, lonesome like it feels like we're by ourselves. But we have a heavenly father that is able to take care of things for us and encourage us. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. In other words, even the youth. You think about youth. Youth has got strength like nobody's business. 
I get around my boy and he's always got some kind of energy. He can talk, he can move, he's always got something going on. He's one of the most energetic people and can smile all the time. And I think it wears me out thinking I can't even have that kind of energy. I wish I had that kind of energy. My daughter the same way because they're youthful, you know. But it says right here that, you, you know, as Brother Bobby had brought up before, and how the, the times, we're living in perilous times and these times are rough and we're living in the last days. It's been the last day since Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ stated it was the last day. My daddy, best, my daddy would best tell me when I was young that we go through cycles. Things get worse, things get better. Things get worse, things get better. That's why that you would see perilous times that Apostle Paul was in. There was times in which I can't even imagine having people going around through the lands killing Christians as Paul was doing until the Lord struck him down. That's a God with power and strength that is able to stop them in their tracks. You got an enemy today, we've got a God that is able to stop them in their tracks. I pray all the time, God, stop my enemies. Lord, I commend them unto you, Lord. I pray, God, have mercy upon me. Hold me up that I might be able to do thy will and thy work. Hold me and strengthen me and protect my family. God, I pray that you will stop them and stop them and put hedges up about me. Oh, God, help me in this great time of need. I pray that just yesterday. You talk about praying a prayer like that, it'll give you chills. But I have a faithful Heavenly Father that has provided for me, protected me, when many people would have probably fallen privy to whatever it was. But God guided and protected. He gave me power and strength when I had none. But notice this, that um, in verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How many times have us as children waited on our mamas and daddies to get us whatever it was that we were trying to get, but sometimes that waiting felt like it was eternity. But that wait was well worth it when we finally got what it is that we really, really wanted. There's some things in my life I really, really wanted. I still don't have it to this day. I pass by and I think, man, I can't wait till I get that one day. I hope I can. And now, the older I get, I probably won't get it. I just enjoy thinking about it. Good Lord knows what's good for me. But brothers and sisters, you think about this. Whether you've got problems in this life, there's things that you face. There's hardships that you have. There's, there's uh, loneliness sometimes, and you're, it feels like you can't go to your mama and your daddy to talk anymore. Be thankful you have your spouse. Sometimes you may not have your spouse. Be thankful you have your children. Sometimes you may not have any children. Get the picture. You have your heavenly father that you can go to. That's a comfort that you have your heavenly father that you're able to go to. You're able to go unto your heavenly father and cry out unto him. As the Holy Scripture teaches us whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We are able to cry out unto him because we have been adopted by the work of Jesus Christ. We have been chosen. We have been predestinated unto the adoption of children. You remember Scripture teaches. 
having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. We have been chosen. We have been elected. We have been called out. Isn't that comforting? And he is our creator. Or we could go unto him and we could talk to him in prayer. And we could find that peace and that comfort. But there's times that we don't get the answers like we want, when we want, how we want. And it feels exhausting waiting for those answers. It feels tiresome. And we lay and we wait and we keep working and we wait. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. You ever say the eagles fly? Or they get really high when they fly. They're able to see very far off when they fly. They're one of the highest flying birds. They can fly and they see very far off. Well, God blesses you when you wait upon the Lord to be able to mount up as wings as eagles and get up to heights that you've never been before. You ever been up in the air before, it feels like there's nothing around you, nothing can harm you. But the creator of the wind is able to keep up the wings that he gives you that you've been waiting on. And you're able to soar high above so much and you get to look down and you're able to see some things that you've never seen before. You're able to understand a little bit more than what you understood before because you're looking down. You ever see GPS location and you're looking down on GPS and you, you look at 3D on, on uh, Google Maps or something and you're able to see some things you never did see before because you're up high looking down on the ground. I want you to think about what it must be like for that bird, that eagle to be soaring high in the air looking down and being able to see so much. When you're down here on the ground, it feels like everything around you is everything to you but as you get up higher all that is around you becomes to be very small in my name and it mean it's, it's it doesn't mean much it's like nothing and you can see afar in all those troubles and all that chaos and you think back like right now with all this going on in this world today and all this chaos and craziness, and the Lord bless you because you've been waiting upon him to take care and fight your battles and help you and strengthen you and hold you up. Your heavenly father's done this for you. He can lift you up to new heights. Amazing. And you look down and all that all those cares become as nothing. Your heavenly father can hold this great vast universe in his hands. Amen. I want you to think of how small we must look to him. Psalmist David said one time, Bow down mine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Time that my wife was in the hospital with a diseased gallbladder, that was my prayer. Bow down mine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. People seek to be rich. The Bible teaches us seek not to be rich. But people seek to be rich. But yet how beautiful it is when we are able to go to our Heavenly Father. We're able to go to Him and we say, and we say, bow down thine ear, O Lord, have mercy on me for I am poor and needy. How comforting is it that your children come to you and they need 
uh, direction. And you're able to give them direction. That's the way a, a true relationship between children and parents should be. Should be. But most of all, sometimes parents out there, I'm not talking about all of you here. I'm talking about children that doesn't have parents. They may fulfill being parents to them. There's children there in foster homes. There's children waiting to be adopted. What a comfort it is to them to know they have a heavenly father that they can bow their head to and they can pray unto him. I want us to look at a portion of scripture found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see, for your heavenly Father knoweth, that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now what a beautiful passage of scripture to think about how that God cares for his children. We just mentioned scripture of waiting upon the Lord. Now if we wait upon the Lord and, and, and as, our, as children wait upon their parents and understand that their parents provide for them and take care of them and and their being the child that God has called them to be for that time period in their life and respectful to their parents. They understand that the, a good father and mother is going to feed them, clothe them, give them a place to sleep, love them and care for them. Any good godly Mother and father is going to do that. Any decent parent will do that. But it says here, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what, or wherewith it shall be, be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. We ought to be looking unto our heavenly Father, that he's going to provide for us. He's going to care for us. He's going to give us all that we need. There's times in which that uh, sometimes when you're uh, going through this life, the hardships get so hard that you feel like, well, where am I going to get my next meal? Uh, where am I going to get my clothes? Uh, what? Where are we going to stay for this time period in our life uh, while we're in between the houses? Or maybe there are some people out there that may have lost their house because maybe they lost their job through all this craziness that's going on out here. And they lost their place uh, and their way of living. I remember that when we had a rental car, that uh, there was a time when we had returned that rental car and I was list uh, I could, couldn't help but overhear the loud conversation between the man that worked at the rental car place and the other client there, uh, she couldn't rent the rental car because she was in between housing and she was living with her mother right now. And she didn't have any bills there in her own name at this time because she had moved in with her, or her parent for a time being. Brothers and sisters, there's some hardships that people go through. But brothers and sisters, isn't it a comfort that we have a heavenly father that's going to provide for us in ways, uh, wherever it may be, uh, provide for us and take care for us and provide us with a way to have a place uh, to stay and lay our head and, and eat our food and some safety. I want you to think about what the answer is to a lot of this, and I'm going to close up. I know it's this Father's Day. We need to close up. But notice this. But seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As Brother Bobby mentioned a while ago about time salvation, that's a time salvation right there in this life. It's, but seek ye first 
the kingdom of God. Well, we're here in the house of God and we're worshiping God the Father in spirit and in truth. And we love him. We sacrifice what we have in this life to be able to be here. We sacrifice our wants, our desires to be here in the house of God. Brothers and sisters, I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. God's going to provide for you. He'll take care of you. Well, we don't seek first the kingdom of God, our heavenly Father's righteousness first, and we don't understand what it means to be there, to honor and glorify him, that he's done so much for us. I hate to see what might happen through those times when we don't. God's merciful, ain't he? God is merciful. He's merciful even when we deserve punishment. He's been merciful. What a heavenly father that we have. Back to my opening text. A father of the father. And a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Praise God for that, isn't it? Praise God that he is in his holy habitation. And that we can cry out to him. And we can seek a place of refuge. And he is a holy God. Righteous in every way. Perfect. And he won't fail us. And when we're in those times of need, we can cry unto him, Abba Father. Thank you for your time, your kind, sweet attention. Continue to keep us in your prayers.